and I was told to get off at uh, a place called uh, Le Chambon sur Lignon. That's spelled L E, in other words, C H A M B O N, sur S U R, and Lignon L I G N O N. Uh, and I arrived there at about four o'clock in the morning, three, three or four o'clock in the morning. It was a bitter cold night. And I was met there by a uh, young man named Daniel Tokme, T R O C M E, who uh, then took me, and uh, we had a very, very long walk uh, through the night. And ultimately, I wound up in a, uh, a stone farmhouse called uh, Les Grillons, G R I L L O N S, the crickets, French word for crickets. And there I found myself uh, together with about 22 or 24 other kids, ranging in age from about 6, 7, uh, up to about uh, 17 or 18, uh, boys and girls. And uh, Daniel Tokme was our, call it then, then father. Uh, he was uh, the, uh, our supervisor and uh, the man who ran that particular uh, home. Uh, later on, I found out that uh, he was the cousin of the pastor of the Le Chambon, uh, whose name was André uh, Trocmé. At first, I didn't know where I was, uh, what it was. I discovered uh, later, especially after the war, many years after the war, that Le Chambon was a most unique uh, village in France. Uh, it is located at about 3,000 feet elevation uh, in the Massif Central, in the central mountain uh, chain in France. Uh, sort of isolated on a uh, desolate uh, plateau, very cold in the winter, windswept plateau. Um, agriculture was uh, pretty rudimentary, um, but what made this village unusual was that in a country uh, that is 90% or 95% Catholic, this village was about 90% Protestant. And uh, the villagers, under the leadership of their pastor, André Trocmé, were inspired to live the Bible. These were very simple farmers. And they considered that the Jews were the chosen people of the Bible. They knew that they were hiding Jews. They uh, also believed in helping, because the, the Bible says to them, help thy neighbor. Um, we um, were looked after and fed. And uh, every so often, uh, we would be told to suddenly leave the classroom or leave our uh, home, Le Grillon, and go pick mushrooms. Go everybody into the woods. Later on, we learned that when that happened, it was the result of an anonymous phone call to the leadership in the village, uh, warning them that uh, there would be a raid and that they were coming out to uh, hunt for Jews or uh, illegal uh, residents there. And we would be kept in the woods until uh, the all clear signal was given and we would then come back into town. We lived as, um, as uh, Frenchmen, so to speak. And uh, this went on until about the latter part of April 1944. At that point, uh, the Germans occupied the town again and ordered all uh, males between the ages of 16 and 55 uh, to report to City Hall. Uh, although I was only 15 and a half at the time, I uh, knew well enough at that point not to uh, go and uh, be exposed. I went and hid in uh, the local church which was adjacent to the uh, school where I was. and. Um, 
I stayed there for about 24 hours. Uh, I knew my way in and out of that church, including how to get up into the church steeple since I had also served mass in that, uh, in that church. And um, years later, I discovered that the, the roundup uh, was conducted by the same uh, group of SS troops that uh, two, three weeks later uh, totally burned down and destroyed the uh, village of Oradour sur Glane, uh, which uh, in which over 630 some people, men, women, babies, were massacred uh, by the Germans 